right ahead. So I'll call the North Smithfield Food Committee meeting of June 15, 2021 to order. Clerk, please follow the roll. Present. Here. 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 Mr. Jones is running late. He'll be in for a second. We have four present, one absent. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, let's move to the Pledge of Allegiance. I have the honor of um, wishing uh, our, the appreciation of a retirement of Miss Mary Despirito, who has been with us for 37 years. Um, she, uh, by all accounts, is a wonderful person, um, as well as an outstanding teacher. In uh, her position was physical education. Um, if she, if, Mr. Sperio, if you could come up to the microphone for a second. like to say a few words to you too. I think it's an impossible task to try to say thank you for 37 years of dedicated service to this community. Uh, my daughter was probably in one of the first classes that you taught here, so that we go back a long way. And I don't think words can express the depth of the legacy that you leave behind. Your time, your effort, your commitment to this school system, not to mention the fun of rapper D. You have made a difference. And because of you, the children of North Smithfield are all winners. So we appreciate everything that you have done. Congratulations, enjoy your retirement, and thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to say something quickly. The, my endearing permanent vision of you will be one of the days you came back to visit and you're sauntering down the hallways with your aviator, aviator glasses just looking badass and <laughs> there are kids lining the hall cheering you and it's just such a tremendous outpouring of love uh, somebody who looked at that moment so tough uh, is just the kindest, most gentle person, absolutely loved the kids, loved her colleagues, and is, is truly the best of North Smithfield. And you will definitely be missed, not just, not just by all of us, but by every kid that you've helped mentor and you've taken care of and you love during your career. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, unless there is objection, I'd like to go to new business, Natalie O'Brien, to speak about this year's We the People program and recognize student achievements. So, Brian. Yeah. Hey. And Ms. O'Brien, before you start, um, if I may uh, congratulate you for uh, Teacher of the Year in North Smithfield. Hey. And the Rhode Island Civics Teacher of the Year statewide. Congratulations. Hey. We are lucky to have you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And I am honored to follow Mary Despirito, um, who my daughter Paige O'Brien has had her for a number of years and, and truly looks up to her and has always loved her classes. So, so thank you, right? It takes a village, it takes all of us. And I'm honored to be here today. Um, 2020 was a, a tough year and you know a lot of people barely made it through and I, I wanted my students to be here this evening because they didn't just make it through right they truly excelled and, and you know this class and this program is never easy and to do it this year I think speaks testaments you know to the community you know to the parents to the students it was just really an, an honor um, to teach them this year every teacher would would say how how hard it was and you know maybe you'd have great days and really difficult days and were you connecting to kids and helping them on every level and when i was at my two we the people classes this year and they would come in you know excited and eager and they did their work and and they would share what they learned and ask questions i was just reminded about what we do in this community and why educators work so hard right it, it's for students who appreciate and um really want to put their all into it and i, I felt that way this year we um, weren't able to go to Washington, D.C., but this year more than ever reminded me that that's something kids look forward to and achieve, and it's wonderful, but that is not what the end is, right? Like, the beauty is creating a community of people who care about one another and listen to one another and want to better those around them and um, want to get their voice heard. And that's what perhaps made this year just so remarkable for me because it instilled my faith in what I think is just so important in, in people, finding their voices, um, knowing who they are, believing in themselves, knowing what they think is truth or not truth and being able to have that really important conversation with others. Like it's hard to put yourself out there um, and, and they always did. Um, so. They obviously did great, right? Excelled all year. Um, they made us very proud at the national competition. It was hard, it was virtual. We had kids at home, kids in person, and um, we were able to have an in-person dress rehearsal and it was super exciting. So we had individuals who came in to judge, who dedicated their time, and uh, the, the students appreciate that, I appreciate it. Um, and we are excited to be able to go to Philadelphia next year. You know, not only with these students, but the students from last year who I think deserve our um, appreciation and everything that they've earned. So just kind of in closing before I, I, I call them up, um, the beauty of the We The People program is that studies show, right? It, it is based on studies that they are more likely to, to vote, to participate in politics, to be involved, to attend a meeting, not just like today, but to really move forward and be invested in more than themselves, um, which I think is so powerful. But the last two weeks, when we were doing our 28th Amendment final projects, which all freshmen do, and it's just a great authentic assessment, um, it was just neat to have kids just think and, and question and 
I, I myself would sit there and think, oh, what can I do for her? And maybe this would make our country better. And all that we ask everybody in our schools every day is to take ownership of their learning and be curious. And these students have done that. So I wanted them to be here in person because um, I, I think like so many students who have gone through this really tough year and have found a way to shine. And for every student, it might not be academically, it might be otherwise, but, but for, for these students, I have to say that the community, we are exceptionally proud of them. So I, I just wanted them to be here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say every student's name and I have a certificate for them. I'm just gonna hold your applause to the end because, you know, kind of short. Um, and you can just kind of applaud them all afterwards. So when, when I say your name, you can just come up. I have a certificate for you and a pen that I hope you will wear in pride as the be the people and the So you're always alumni and these moments will stay with you and know that if you work hard that you can achieve anything. And I hope that that's a lesson that we all learn in life and, and that all of you have learned that a young age. Okay, so I would just like to call up, and a lot of people are not here, but I just want their names to be on the record. Um, Sam Austin, Jasmine Kukush, Aiden Bienvenu, Marjorie Black, Jack Quove, Well done, Jim. <laughs> David Carter. Jacob Benadella. Carter Shardier. Aiden Dalby. Kaylee Boyle. Thank you very much.
unless there's objection, I'd like to go to new business item number two, uh, Matt Tech to speak regarding athletic awards for states in finals for the school year 2019-2020 in 2020-2021. Mr. Tech. Thank you. Uh, good evening. And it's uh, very exciting to be here in person and not having to go listen through a computer and talk through a computer screen. I'm really excited. And I think that um, it's always nice to be able to talk about awards and appearances. Uh, it's always good to talk about those things. But, you know, I really want to acknowledge the fact that, you know, in the 2020 spring season, everything came to a halt and it was just gone. It was in the middle of the 13th of Friday, we just packed up and that was it. And then no spring sports happened. And then we didn't get the chance to really celebrate and acknowledge those uh, appearances and finals. And we did win a state championship in football. We did win a state championship in competitive cheerleading. So they missed all that pomp and circumstance that would go with it. They missed the raising of the banner to the wall and those celebrations in there. So I do appreciate the school committee taking the time to acknowledge their success in that. Uh, we did pass out a majority of those uh, certifications already, acknowledging their success. But what I even want to talk about a little more before I get to uh, sports is I do want to acknowledge Ms. O'Brien and the work that she did with the students as well too. As a colleague, for 16 plus years, it's always impressive to see year after year after year the uh, impressive performance that they put on with the Be The People program. Not an easy program at all. Someone who can acknowledge the, the people that are in there, the ninth graders who have to balance their work schedule, their, their sports schedule, and still do the Be The People and produce those results. It's amazing. It's fascinating to watch it every single year. Also, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't take time to uh, thank Mary DeSpirito personally. Uh, she's been with me my entire career. I have not had to spend a year without her. I'm not looking forward to next year spending it without her. So uh, if you didn't get a chance at all, you should go by the middle school gymnasium. Uh, one of my proudest moments uh, was being able to put a championship banner on the wall in honor of Mary DeSpirito. Her name will hang in infamy over that banner. And I was trying to think of a way to summarize her to me and what she means to the community and the kids. And we only came up with one word, legendary. That's it. She's a legend. You, you don't go to North Smithfield and not know who Mary DeSpirito is. It, that's just the way it is. Um, and so uh, I really want to personally thank you for the influence that you've had on me, my career, and I hope that I'll do you proud going forward. So thank you, Mary, very much. Um, thank you. This year, uh, more importantly, I want to also thank the uh, school committee for giving their blessing to run athletics. Uh, not an easy decision. Uh, many difficult decisions in this year going into a pandemic year and learning how to teach and educate in that, but to run our extracurricular programs as well, too. Um, through your support, we've obviously persevered this year in running athletics. And uh, to nobody's surprise, North Bayville has done very well. We've done, done very, very well, and uh, more of our teams have appeared in playoffs this year. And I'm proud to report that in the spring, every single one of our programs made the playoffs. Every single one of them is playing right now. Three of our teams have moved on to the semifinals already. Our girls across programs playing tonight for a chance to move on to the semifinals, putting four of our programs in position to be one game away from state championship appearance. So I might be back up here again, make sure you the little certifications from you guys, but um, I just want to say it's more of a norm in North Smithfield to produce on the athletic field as well as in the classroom now. And we're matching our excellence in the classroom with our excellence on the field. Couldn't be more prouder as an athletic director to say that, that it's more common to be in the playoffs than not. And that's a, a credit to the support that they get from the administration here, down to the coaches and down to the student athletes themselves. So it's a, a whole kind of community process to do that, but it couldn't be more proud of them. And so I wanted to thank you very much for your acknowledgement of them. Uh, make sure they are given those certifications as well too. And uh, I got to kind of duck out because we got a playoff game going on right now. So have yourself a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move over to uh, uh, public comment. Does anybody have anything from the public to say? Superintendent, are we, are we able to take questions from Zoom? Yeah, we can. Wow. So if uh, somebody would like to raise their hand or uh, turn on their video, we can switch over to you. Um, 
And Madam Clerk, for the record, uh, Mr. Jones is here. Can you please? Uh, there is here. I don't see anyone raising their hand or trying to flag me down on video. Okay. And what about community comments? Does anybody have any community comments? Mark Labossier just came alive. Okay. Is there any way I could speak? You can speak. Let me just get your your face up there. Uh oh. Don't do that. There you go. <laughs> your your full screen. Go ahead. Was. When he's I just wanted to uh to say to Mary Despirito, how much I love her. Um, I, I don't have 16 years with her. I only have a solid 12. But Mary, you have been uh, an amazing guiding force for me. And I love you and I will miss you. And that pretty much sums it up. So thank you for everything that you've done for the town. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. And I love you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other comments? Superintendent, do you no, see anyone? I do not see anyone raising their hand or flailing about like Mark did. Okay. <laughs> Hearing none, let's move to the consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions about anything on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Chair, I, we'll be sending a thank you. We'll be sending a thank you to Taylor and Dr. Taylor and Dr. Striking for the donation. Yes. Uh, moving on to reports, Superintendent. Uh, this is the part where I prefer to keep the camera off me, but I am just going to go up to the podium. What I wanted to do was just, since this is our last official meeting of the year, the school year, I just wanted to uh, give a series of thank yous. It's been a difficult year. And especially uh, last night at the public hearing, uh, Mr. Jones, you know, I think really summed up what this year was like. And I, I certainly can't top that. But uh, I just want to give a thank you to our teachers. Uh, it was a difficult year of planning, of coming out of everyone's comfort, comfort zone. We live streamed from every classroom, which is a feat that not many districts had attempted. And they planned, they worked, they did everything they could to keep our students engaged and to balance instruction and to meet every student at every level, despite being at home, uh, being full-time distance learning, hybrid distance learning, in some days, out other days, on quarantine. I mean, it was just a, uh, a, a, an incredible year. Uh, but our teachers really pulled, pulled it together and did a truly remarkable job. I, I want to thank our principals, our administrators. The, you know, every day it was like rolling with the crazy in that something came up, okay, we've never had this happen before, how are we going to handle it? And they met it with confidence and calmness and uh, again, they, they did such a remarkable job of keeping morale up, keeping their communities together, uh, connecting with parents, working with the students. Uh, Again, just truly remarkable work. Our support staff, our custodians who cleaned and disinfected and 
kept our schools and our rooms and our hallways and our public spaces safe. Uh, many districts around the state hired additional custodial staff. Many districts brought in outside agencies to get this work done. Our folks did it with a lot of organization and hard work in-house without um, having to go outside of our own organization to get the job done. Our office administrators, the, uh, uh, our, our secretaries, uh, secretaries our, our admin staff, um, the phone calls, the, the, the students coming down with problems and questions and, you know, trying to work with the parents, whether it's uh, through email or phone, uh, to, again, just to, to, to keep everybody calm, to give information. Uh, they were, in many ways, the heart and soul of, of, of the schools, kept it running smoothly, kept everybody in touch with each, with each other. Our nurses, oh my goodness, the nurses. They were the boots on the ground. They were our front lines. They were the captains in the field. You know, we, we defer to our nurses. They were, they are the public medical health professionals. They, they were so instrumental in keeping everyone safe, keeping the uh, rates of COVID down, uh, the, the, the contact tracing that had to happen all weekend through the evening. Uh, and again, just, just trying to calm parents and, and, and advise them on what they needed to do, to do it safely, to do it well. And again, they, they were truly remarkable. Uh, our families, our families exhibited tremendous amount of patience. Uh, even those times where people weren't patient, uh, we, we had some school committee meetings and we had some outspoken people who were we're either moving with reopening either too fast or too slow, but the and, and, and a lot of the emails I received. But the important thing is, even if somebody disagreed with how we were moving or our pace, it was out of a sense of deep concern for the students. You know, so that was at the heart of every every question we had, every discussion, sometimes debates. It was that non-stop advocacy of getting our kids in school, keeping them safe, helping them learn, you know, getting them, getting them over some of the isolation that they're experiencing at home. So again, it was an entire community pulling together all with the goal of with, we're doing the right thing for our students. Our kids, our students, oh my goodness, you know, despite bouncing between computer and classroom and hybrid and full, uh, they kept to the protocols, they kept to the masking, they kept to the pods and the grouping, they kept to uh, uh, passing uh, uh, quarterly in hallways. Uh, they were tremendously supportive of each other and their schools uh, to allow us to open up as early as we did. And finally, I, I wanna thank you guys, school committee, and you know you were real partners in this uh you had many of your constituents come to you with questions or concerns and you contacted us and or provided solutions for us i mean we were able to navigate this strange odd covid world uh by connecting with each other and uh, uh helping the community through this by communicating um, so deeply, deeply appreciated. Uh, it, again, this, this, everybody this year, I felt, just came together and really showed North Smithfield at its absolute best. Uh, I'm truly looking forward to and hopefully, hoping we're coming out after the summer and we're going to be into a more normal, possibly modified in some areas uh, uh, construction. We have great plans coming up and some, some wonderful things coming up for the students and to sort of try to compensate for what this past year and a half brought us. And so at that point, I'd like to just turn over to Claire Arnold who can share some of the things that we have coming up. All right, thank you.
so we do have uh, some plans for this summer. And so what we've what we've done and what we've been continually having conversations about where our students are, and we know that there is learning loss. We know that there is engagement that we want to re-engage our students. And so when we're looking forward, we're going to predominantly be planning for our next school year, but we also wanted to offer some summer activities and opportunities to engage our students um, into, into school, back into school. And so um, this summer we will be running some programs at NSES and they will be a variety of academic based programs. So it will be English language arts, primarily English language arts and in math, but um, not necessarily come in for tutoring, but it will be a book clubs and, and math um, enrichment activities for students to participate in. At the middle school, high school, our focus is on student engagement because we did find that um, through the data, through conversations with administrators and, and teachers, the community, I have a, a parent advisory group that I've met with, is that our, our focus for middle school and high school is really on the engagement of, of students and that social connectedness after COVID. And so we will be offering more enrichment activities at the high school and it could range from gardening to hiking. Um, the elementary menu of uh, offerings actually went out yesterday. The high school will be going out uh, by the end of this week, and it's just a variety of activities to re-engage our students. We also have some partnerships happening, which I'm thrilled about. I, I reached out to folks at the town, and they have been wonderful. Um, Kate Pasparella um, at the town, Ray Pendergast, um, Renee, I can't remember her last name, but uh, North Smithfield Library, but we've been having conversations about um, engaging our students at the library, um, the, the schools and uh, North Smithfield Library is partnering where we're creating backpacks. And so that instead of a student just going in and taking a book out as they would in the library, they actually have themed backpacks. And the themed backpacks have um, STEM, science, technology, and engineering, and math focus. And it could be some uh, like an environmental type backpack, or it could be learning how to code, where a student would take the backpack. There's a little robot inside. There's directions on how to code. There's other books that um, students could read about coding. There's activities for them to do. Um, so there'll be about 30 backpacks available for the students all summer long for, for re-engagement activities. Um, and we're also um, working with Camp Phoenix, and we're in the process of um, having, we will have teachers available in the afternoon afternoons on at Camp Phoenix for students to cycle into uh, academic enrichment. So um, they would have their typical camp activities, but students also could cycle into a story hour or uh, uh, literacy or math type activity um, during camp. Phoenix. So we definitely are working on our summer programs, but we're also planning for next year. And that's really when we think of supports and interventions, that's where it's going to come. And, and we know that there are gaps that we'll have to make up and we're going to and we're going to meet the students where they are and provide them what they need. Um, we have applied for a grant for um, funding for clubs next year at the middle school, high school. I haven't got approval yet, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I almost 100% that it will go through, but it's for um, clubs at the high school and we'll be able to support 72 different clubs um, between the middle, middle school and high school next year. They've run for five week sessions. And um, in the past when we've had, we've never had this many, but when in the past that we've had an opportunity like, opportunity like this, our teachers 100% have stepped up and they've been really engaging clubs and it could be the Dungeons and Gra Dragons Club or the Disc Golf Club or the Archery Club or the Chess Club, just a variety of book clubs. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, working with teachers and establishing uh, clubs for the students to get our middle school, high school students back engaged in, in, in learning. So I'm looking forward to next year and more plans will be coming forward. And so I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting. Absolutely. I just um, wanted, had one question because I was at the meeting last week with the commissioner and, some, and it was a public meeting with other people besides me. And one of the things the ride staff said was that they had found, they had findings with this year, the big, when they did their uh, assessments, was that the biggest deficits were actually not in the older grade, in the, with the older kids, but the younger kids, and you know across the board in math. 
is that what you're finding in those, or do you have any sense of, is that what's going on? Because they were given statewide statistics. Is that what we have in those Smithfield too, or are we? So no. math definitely is, is, is has been and tricky, and we will be getting more assessment data very soon, So I'll, and I'll report out on that when we have um, more accurate data, but um, we d definitely find the math is going to be um, an area of emphasis. Right now, we're looking at math at the um, middle school as our area of emphasis, and it, as far as the elementary school, um, especially K-1 and 2, is the uh, literacy skills. Right? They're just it's incredibly important for students to be reading by grade three and for our incoming second graders they had a kindergarten where a year ended early ended in, in march and then their first grade year was an atypical school year and so they're entering grade two and so we're going to put um extra supports 100 percent into our early literacy especially our second grade students okay the follow up just a bride had said too that they were going to be doing a lot of often a lot of supports for the summer work. So I'd just be curious to hear at some point you know, how if, if we're getting supports from Ryan. So they do have um, supports that are um, are opportunities through the it's not the advanced course net the all course network where parents or families could sign up for a course. Um, and it used to just be something at the high school level, but then now they have opportunities for students at all levels. And that actually in our um, enrichment um, summer program that we sent out to families, we also sent a, the link to the all course network for the, the ride programs. Um, so parents will have access to that link or already have access to that. Thank you, Ms. Honor. Thank you. Any further questions? We'll move on to um, item number four, informational um, personnel resignations, retirements, leave of, leave of absences, and appointments. As we all know, the superintendent has authority to do this. Does anybody have any questions, concerns? Just a comment. I'm so glad to see that we have such a robust to this live program. Full in person. In summer school. Yeah, both. Both. Yep. All in person. Moving on to item number five, old business. Um, the fiscal year 21 operating capital budgets. You said, is there anything in regards to 21 that you want to speak about? Fiscal year 22 budget. Um, I just like to ask if we could schedule a meeting for the 30th if it's possible to just sure. um, clean up for the end of the year and maybe approve next year's budget. Uh, six o'clock meeting. Does anybody have any? Is anybody able to make it? Six o'clock. Chair, I'm not sure I'll be able to get up that night, but you know, have the meeting and I'll do my best. They're, 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 they're probably in session that night. I'll probably late. So. But I think you still have to. Be, I'll make it if I can. Will be virtual or it should be just a few minute meeting, right? Maybe we can do it virtual. It's no, no, so what I mean is you can still do it in person, but if I could attend virtually, I'd probably get it in a few minutes. Superintendent, is that possible? I don't know if the uh, governor's order allows the mixing, okay. it's either all virtual or a hybrid like this. I'm not too sure where school committee stands as far as coming in virtually. No, I, I think it doesn't. I think it's any open meeting is, has been extended. So I don't know what the extension date is, but it should be shouldn't end before the end of the month. So no, we, we could do it in person. We could do it virtually. We, we could do, do a hybrid virtually? like this. No, it yeah, should be a five minute meeting. Do it however you want. Don't make a comment. I'll do my best with it. Okay. Perhaps if it's in person, probably. I'm thinking for a five minute meeting, it would be easier virtually. That works for you. Yeah, it works for everybody else. I don't know. Yeah. 
All right, so we'll do a six o'clock meeting on the 30th virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, and just for the record on the 22 uh, operating capital budgets, we did go before uh, the um, town council last night and we testified uh, at the public hearing about the fiscal year 22 operating capital budgets. Um, we also spoke about the fiscal year 21 budget and what we, what when I say we, I guess it's the superintendent, his staff has done to save uh, money uh, and the reasons why we would run a surplus in fiscal year 21 that would not be available in 22. Um, I thought that we received a very positive response from the town council and um, I think that um, we should be in good shape moving forward. Okay. Um, all right, we'll go to item number six, new business, three, negotiations, NSTA uh, contracts, September 1st, 2021 through August 31st, 2024, discussion vote uh, or other action uh, to be sent for ratification by the town council, um, Mr. Jones. Well, I like to make it up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, as the school committee may know, the uh, the subcommittee focused on the teachers contract negotiations, meeting over the last four months pretty regularly. Um, the superintendent and uh, the district team. Have meeting even more regularly with the teachers trying to find real strong common ground on which we can build a contract we can all agree on and I'm happy to report that as of today the teachers union has approved the contract for uh, the next three years so um, I think it is a fair contract I think that the contract genuinely recognizes and rewards the, the teachers for the great work they've done and that they continue to do while at the same time holding dear our responsibility to the town to make sure that we are good financial stewards of, uh, of, of uh, our taxpayers' monies. So I am strongly recommending that we send this along to the town council and I will answer any questions anyone here on the committee has about the contract now. So the contract was provided to us in the package. Um, did anybody see anything that was concerning? Does anybody want to talk about it? I feel very comfortable. If you're comfortable with it, feel that it's fair and fiscally responsible. That sounds great. Anybody have any further questions or concerns? Um, I did reserve the right to go to executive session if anybody would like to. Have they got any information on this or is it just coming up? That uh, they have not. We, we generally pass it and then send it over to them. The teachers union just uh, approved it today. So just just for point of clarification <clears throat> with the subcommittee we've been negotiating in executive session just for I understood it. Okay, so, so you need to take over the We understand the union approved it by a comfortable march. Oh. Congratulations. And, uh, Mr. Jones was led, led the negotiations. I want to thank you very much. Um, you know, as you, as everybody knows and teaches in negotiations, it gets tough sometimes. Um, but Mr. Jones, um, did a great job. You're welcome. All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to pass the NSTA contract from September 1st, 2021 through August 31st, 2024, uh, and send it to ratification by the town council. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Aye. Sam? Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. 
got five eyes, uh, no nays, uh, motion passes. Thank you. New business item number four, discussion regarding future protocol procedures in excessive heat wave. Um, that is something actually that I had asked to be put on the agenda because I'm co-chair along with Mrs. Salvatore of the Northland Field Health and Wellness Committee. And as such, I need to bring forward my concerns about the heat wave that we experienced last week. Um, five days of extreme temperatures greater than 90 degrees that had to have affected in some way not only the students and their ability to learn, but also the teachers and the staff who were not in air conditioned rooms or offices. Um, almost a dozen schools in Massachusetts dismissed students early, calling it a heat related half day, and one town canceled altogether, along with several New Hampshire systems that did the same. But obviously, this presents its own set of problems, such as making up days, scrambling for childcare at the last minute, and so forth. Granted, some people are affected by the heat more than others. Some rooms, especially on the upper levels of this building, because heat rises, obviously, are, are more affected than others. And students still wearing masks at the elementary school must have been very uncomfortable. Whether one believes in climate change or not, summers are arriving earlier, they're getting hotter, they're lasting longer, they're going well into September and October. Um, Mike did some research when I first mentioned this to him, and thank you, I appreciate that. Um, but it found that there were no heat-related policies for schools in Rhode Island. Connecticut is the same, but does post suggestions from the Department of Health on ways to help students and staff beat the heat, but they're just common sense procedures that I'm sure we're doing anyway. So I don't have an easy answer, especially since I know, um, thanks to Mr. Seafi, that air conditioning the upper floors of this building alone would cost $300,000. And I'm not looking for a policy or a protocol because I think that's unrealistic. Um, but I'm wondering if there could be a common sense approach to heat waves that are predicted well in advance of their arrival, extreme temperatures that um, last longer than a day or two. And I'm just sharing my concerns because of the, from a health and wellness perspective, basically. And I'm hoping that it might generate some discussion or brainstorming or ideas, especially among the administrators because they know their buildings so well. And that's it. Thank you. I just wanted to bring my concerns. No, and well, we're we're food for thought. Absolutely valid concerns. And, and I should tell you uh, that last week, uh, now we had the heat over Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we're still distance learning. So it was really Tuesday, Wednesday. And I can tell you, if it, 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 it had lasted longer than just the Tuesday and Wednesday, we may have done something. Uh, I was in communication with the superintendents within our consortium, uh, Cumberland, Lincoln, Smithfield, Barville, uh, to discuss plans. And we all agreed that uh, because it was breaking on Wednesday, we were just going to just kind of put, get ourselves through Tuesday, Wednesday, and welcome the relief that came on Thursday. Uh, but as you said, there are a lot of common sense approaches that we can take. I mean, certainly a lot of breaks. I, I saw a lot of kids outside classrooms uh, in the shade of the building, uh, moving the classes outside. I saw a lot of kids at the, uh, uh, the water fountains and the bottle filling stations that we have throughout. Uh, yes, we have looked into adding air conditioning to our buildings and it's prohibitively expensive, but the periods of intense heat are just going to increase. So, you know, it may get to the point where we have to consider that cost uh, because as we go have very warm September <clears throat> and into October and then our June, May, Junes, and, uh, you know, we may have to do something like that. I've, I've also looked at these, 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 these thermal filaments uh, that go on the windows, especially here in this building, that side where the sun beats down 
And then the three floors over there that turn into, I, I, I think of it as a busy bake oven. Uh, you know, there, there may be things that we can do to sort of offset uh, that amount of heat. But yes, I, I absolutely agree. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry, I just the wrong topic. Sure. Any further discussion? Yeah, Drew, so just, just a thought. I'd also like us to consider, or well, the superintendent perhaps to consider pursuing, you know, just things we could do outside. I, I'm not think I can't think of what exactly they're specifically called, but there, I've seen a lot of events where they have. It's almost like a tent, but it's a very thin type of canvas, you know, and that uh, you know it's light from what I gather, and it, it blocks the sun. I don't know if that would be a, an option for uh, the kids to go out and do some classes outside. We could go shake. Think that we could erect. Think if we knew it's coming, we could erect these. Not have them out there all the time, but erect them maybe three or four days in advance. If they if they depend on how much sun they block out, right? right. Um, maybe something to consider. I, I've seen them out again a lot of events where they put them out for large crowds. And I don't know, I don't know what it is. I've seen it, it's a canvas that's very light and it's pretty thin. So that maybe outside, again, maybe outside might be enough. Or to enhance outside. Right. Obviously, they would go outside. Absolutely. So this, Ms. Mayo, thank you. This is very, very timely. And I, I'm actually uh, focusing on something similar in my business right now because so many seniors are being affected by heat. And one thing um, that I think may help, not as a simple fix, certainly, but just something to consider would be uh, maybe for next year, if we did consider putting, maybe, maybe it's some type of policy or maybe it's just some um, collateral throughout the classroom just to recognize the signs of things like heat stroke, sunstroke, dehydration, you know, what to look out for so that, uh, you know, instead of um, maybe a, a student just shrugging it off and saying, oh, fine, it's just hot, they or teachers or friends or whoever are uh, really getting a grip on, hey, this is, this is getting kind of, uh, kind of dangerous. And that might also help us plan out more. We are in the middle of a, what's appearing to be a three, four day heat wave. And on day two, we are recognizing that there's a pattern of students going to the nurse with actual symptoms of heat stroke. Then maybe that gives us real, um, a real leg to stand on when it comes to closing school the next day or switching to distance learning if that's even an option for I think today, something like that. So yes, that's just food for thought. I think education in this aspect would uh, Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's uh, move on to item number five, discussion vote or other action on Right to Read Act, ongoing professional development through the 21-22 school year, not to exceed 105,000. Claire. So I don't know if you have any questions. In your packet, I did include some information about the Right to Read Act, which was passed in July 2019. All teachers in Rhode Island have to have this training and the amount of training varies by teacher, what, what grade you teach, what certification you have. So the least amount of training would be maybe a, a high school world language teacher would need about 10 hours of training. The most training would be um, an elementary special education teacher who could need up to 100 hours of training. So it definitely varies. It is a heavy lift for districts, but keep in mind that it is, it's wonderful training and it's great knowledge. And so I, you know, we have to balance that as we, as we work through what this law is having us do. Um, the training in your packet, I, I showed what programs that we're using. The Department of Ed showed us, uh, gave us guidance of what programs we can choose from that fit our, that would fit our needs and satisfy uh, the law. And so our literacy team came together, we made up a district plan and we're moving forward on it. It is very expensive to do this training. Our elementary um, for our special education teachers, K to 12 will be trained in Orton Gillingham program, which is you know an excellent program for the science of reading, but it is expensive. And so um, one of the, the great things about it is that um, as, as we move forward, we will be able to use some of our ESSER funds. Um, just uh, did receive um, information from the Department
Department of Education. That 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 is an approvable um, pr program for SO funds, and so it's tricky at this point. We just started. We have about um, we have two cohorts of teachers right now being trained. One elementary cohort, um, one high school uh, cohort is being trained uh, this this summer. And what I'm finding is that the, the training and the programs out there are, are booked. It's actually hard to get in them. And so one of the conversations I had with uh, Mr. St. Jean that I bring to you today is that can I have uh, an approved um, amount, this approved amount that we wouldn't go over this, but as trainings come available and if I can get teachers in, I wanna be able to, to get them registra registered as, as fast as possible, not to lose their slots. And so. Um, that's why I came to you, um, instead of slowly, <laughs> small, small amounts that it wouldn't exceed um, the bottom line, but that's what most likely the training would cost in total over a number of years. Great. Just, just out Thank of you. curiosity, if it, if it weren't for the ESSER funds, would money have followed this mandate? Not that I'm aware. Any chance that we could? And I have to apologize. I didn't get a chance to. I mean, I know the problem, or the issue. But can we get any teachers to come? I mean, um, instructors to do it here. In other words, have come. Can we? Are there people we could hire to come out here to do the program for us? Like, or is that just not practical? So I'm looking into that. Honestly, the if we had, if we ran a cohort, for example, for the Orton Gillingham, we could get 40 teachers trained in this program. The problem with that is we can't have 40 teachers out of the classroom at the same time. And so I could possibly run a cohort where, and I'm working with other districts where maybe I run a cohort and Smithfield runs a cohort and Cumberland runs a cohort. And I send 10 teachers during the Cumberland dates and 10 teachers during the Smithfield dates and 10, 10 more Smithfield teachers. So they're on different schedules because we won't be able to have have sub coverage. And the, it's not a training that you could do even if it was offered for, you know, five days a week for three weeks in the summer. That's not how it works. The training is um, through, throughout a year that um, there's a practicum with it. You have to work with students. You have to report back you know, on what you learned and then how you had it in action and then bring it back. So it happens over time. So the cohort that we have the elementary student uh, teachers in right now um, are already started in May and they won't be finished until June, 2022. So it's, it's, in, it's intense. It's wonderful. It's an, an incredible amount of knowledge about the science of reading. Uh, it will certainly help our, our students with dyslexia to have an entire, you know, every teacher that they encounter will have that training, but it is a heavy lift. Good discussion, Mr. Chair. Is the 105,000 enough? So it's definitely enough to get started. I don't want to say that that will cover it. I did, I, you know, my own quick analysis. I don't know if the rates are going to change or go up because I think everyone's trying to get in them. Um, if there's more virtual options, I think it could stay this, the same, that we could actually do a virtual option. Somebody's running in New Jersey and we have teachers participate in that. I don't know if it will unfold that way. And so I think that it should cover it, yes. And some of the options actually for the 10 hours, that will be, those will be ride modules that will be free of charge. And so for the for a language teacher at the high school, that will cost nothing but time. And we will have common planning time that teachers will be able to use to satisfy those requirements. We certainly have to get it done one way or another. And so we're starting um, with uh, two small cohorts right now, but, it, but we will be we'll jumping in. Any further questions? Okay, thank you again. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the Right to Read Act ongoing professional development through 21 22 school year, not to exceed 105,000. Motion to made. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Go to the final item. Motion to Valentina. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Seconded. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
All opposed? The ayes have it. We're adjourned.